language and culture. The language and words used by the invaders have made the most obvious contribution to the English language. This ranges from place names first used during the Roman occupation of Britain, such as Manchester, Colchester and Chester, from the Latin castra, meaning military camp. But also other words like village, agriculture, bonanza, beast, magnify, terrain, etc. From the Anglo-Saxons, we have words that describe everyday life. Drink, come, go, sing, love, like, son, daughter, home, ground. And we also have days of the week. Twi, Woden, Frigge, which became Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. Other words were incorporated during the arrival of the Vikings, such as those used in connection with battle. Slaughter, slatra, club, clubber, run, berserk, meaning to go mad or become uncontrollable, which comes from the bear skin traditionally worn to battle. Later still, when the Norman French invaded England, the English language received another injection of French words that is significantly increased the size of its vocabulary. Many of these words concern society and its organisation. Castle, battle, army, archer, soldier, guard, crown, throne, duke, peasant, govern, condemn, justice, courtesy, chivalry. Everyday life words were also incorporated into English, such as city, market, porter, pork, sausage, grape, tart, biscuit, sugar, fry, vinegar, etc. Indeed, it is estimated that during the 300 years of Norman French domination, around 10,000 words of French origin found their way into the English language. One of the consequences of this French influence is that the English language developed a richness of vocabulary which provided speakers with a great variety of words to use. For example, wish or desire, answer or response, hair or leveret, axe or hatchet. Often these words had nuances of meaning, ask or demand, bit or morsel, might or power, room or chamber. Naturally, this rich vocabulary was used for creative expression, as can be seen in the works of Geoffrey Chaucer. One of the best examples of this new wealth of vocabulary is Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, in which the writer uses sophisticated words such as difficulty, significance, dishonesty, as well as more basic words like friendly, wifely, willingly. More words and terminology found their way into the English language during the 16th and 17th centuries in what is known as the English Renaissance. New discoveries in science and medicine required new words to describe phenomena and concepts. Genius, species, militia, radius, specimen, criterion, squalor, apparatus, focus, tedium, lens, antenna, paralysis, nausea, etc. Many of these new words in English were borrowed from Latin and Greek. Scientific works could now be published in English because it had become an accepted language of eloquence and sophistication. For example, in 1704, Isaac Newton published his works entitled Optics in English. Before this, Latin and German were considered to be the most appropriate language for publications. Culture was also a vehicle for the spread of, Eng of the English language. No better example of this can be found in the legacy left by William Shakespeare. During his lifetime, he wrote 38 plays, 154 songs, and two long narrative poems. His works have been translated into the major languages all around the world. The beauty and creativity of Shakespeare's work became a symbol for the English language and its culture.